there's a huge yeah. part of the population It'll, that would oppose it. Yeah. Uh, and the second is, mm -hmm. you keep focusing on uh, catastrophe rather than a long-term uh, problem, as if it, it's going to take a catastrophe to be reactive rather than proactive. Would you comment on that? Yeah. Um, well, I would like to believe that um, sweet reason propagates itself and that the world gradually comes to believe that we have to do something about this without any image of catastrophe needing to trigger it. Um, uh, human beings being what they are, though, and political processes being what they are, it's a lot easier to believe that we will suddenly get a lot more serious, and we do have to get a lot more serious. If there is Now, obviously, my favorite scenario is that a generation comes of age, realizes this problem, and gets a lot more serious about it spontaneously. Um, just because there, we know enough about it to realize that we really ought to be taking prudent action. Um, every time I say something like that, though, I run into like a friend I just a few weeks ago who is working for somebody who I guess is going to run for governor of New York and has done very extensive polling and <coughs> asked people, what do you care about? Didn't show up in New York. Didn't show up. Uh, now, you know, it's pretty obvious that people are worried about their jobs and that sort of thing. But it is literally not on the, not, it, it doesn't get onto the list, never mind down the list. Um, so if public reaction is to, has got a long way to go before it will support the fairly dramatic changes required to really achieve mitigation. Uh, and that's why we all get driven into these catastrophe scenarios. Plus, you can comment on this maybe, right? The people watching the climate and its effects are getting nervous. I mean, they're seeing changes going on a lot more rapidly than, than they anticipate. Um, and although they can't come up and say, now we proved that we're going over a cliff, they're getting noticeably uneasy. Um, and uh, uh, so, you know, that, that I'm, I'm just, I'm sensing, if you will, that we're going to have to go to a, a, a different state of public consciousness and it's probably going to be an image of big trouble that is clearer than we currently have that would get us there. So just a couple of quick elaborations. First of all, of course, um, there is uh, uh, a lot of money getting spent to make sure that a very substantial portion of the public stays totally confused about this. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, it, it's been really quite pernicious, but there's been literally tens of millions of dollars spent on, on every little thing that comes along that might, uh, uh, you know, relate to on some uncertainty. And while sure there's uncertainty about some of the details of the climate science, there isn't any uncertainty about uh, uh, whether we have a serious problem. The other issue is that there are folks running around saying this is going to be incredibly expensive, it's going to just totally wreck the economy. Well, you can recall that uh, many of those same people made precisely that same argument about the Clean Air Act. And the electricity industry met the requirements for the Clean Air Act at a cost of, well, actually the economy met the, the requirements of the Clean Air Act at a price that was about a half a percent of GDP. Now, if you were going to decarbonize the energy system on a gradual basis over the next 50 years or so, by which I mean, for example, in electricity, roughly doubling the rate of new construction and never building anything that was not zero carbon, um, you could probably decarbonize the entire a system for something like seven-tenths of one percent of GDP. But you can make it as expensive as you want. I mean, if you hold off and hold off and then suddenly decide, oh my God, and we got a real problem, uh, and you have to junk a lot of technology that's still got useful life, you can make it really expensive. So, so the folks who say you could wreck the economy this way aren't, aren't wrong, they're just not well, telling you the whole story. <laughs> I mean, the, you won't wreck the economy if you go about it in a systematic way. You will wreck the economy if you wait till the last minute and then suddenly discover that you've got to junk 
uh, 2,000 megawatt new, relatively new coal-fired power plants. And to add that, um, uh, there's a lot of liquidity running around the financial system looking for the next bubble. Um, uh, <laughs> this is actually the energy transformation is a very productive place to put your money. You can make money doing that, and it's a productive result. So uh, it doesn't appear to be at least hopeless to convince the markets that rather than go create some speculative Ponzi scheme, um, put it in, put money into, into a transformation we know we're going to need, um, and you can make a lot of money doing it, whoever sort of gets the lead sort of items in this area. Uh, uh, and, I, you know, I think conceivably you convince the markets that this is a, a good place uh, to invest. Uh, and Granger is exactly right. The problem is to try to do it on a, on a prudent schedule, not to wait until there's some kind of crash effort that has to be uh, that. But, but you see, because, as John says, we are human and there is a good possibility that that's the way it will play out, I mean, my concern is that we get into a mode where we wait, we wait, we wait. Oh, my God, there's no way we can do it fast enough. We've got to do geoengineering. Yeah. And, and so that's another... Forget the other. Yeah, and that that's really another is reason heroin, why I think you yeah. really have to understand today not just what could be the direct consequences, but what might be the downsides. Uh, and, you know, is it really indeed as simple and straightforward as we uh, many people think. I mean, for example, there's some recent results that suggest that sulfate may not be a terribly effective uh, strategy that you may want to use uh, sulfuric acid. Uh, one of the things, of course, that people worry about is what about acid rain? Well, it to I mean, it turns out that the amount of material that you have to put in the stratosphere to offset is really small in comparative terms. And so, uh, uh, the ecological impacts of, uh, of fallout um, are not likely to be uh, significant. And there are people also talking about specially engineered particles that would self-orient, self-levitate. I mean, there's all kinds of fairly wild uh, possibilities, and, but nobody's working seriously on most of them. I think I see another, yeah. yeah we've got three please. here now. Yeah. Thank you. I'm uh, Jim Turner from NOAA. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for talking about ocean acidification. Uh, but I do have a question about uh, some of the uh, field scale experiments that you were talking about doing. Uh, what are some of the parameters that you would need? Uh, because you certainly need something that's big enough so that you can detect an effect and uh, also uh, uh, something that, that is large enough so that you can learn enough to extrapolate from it. So can you talk about some of the parameters? You know, when you talk about a limited scale uh, you know, field test, can you talk about the kinds of, of size you're talking about? So not everything you do. Yeah, please. Let's, let's do this. There, I see two more hands, so let's accumulate the questions. Okay, and then Because we're sort of almost at the end of the All time. All right, fine. This is a general question, but besides Al Gore and the three of you, where is the leadership going to come from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to uh, engage these projects and move forward. And there was another, or was I mistaken? Yeah, it's... Okay. <clears throat> Spurgeon Keening, I just wanted to ask uh, whether uh, the proposal I've heard uh, that it would be useful to paint all roofs, mm -hmm. parking lots, and roads white uh, so the that would be reflected directly out. If that was suddenly done, would that make a measurable effect or would it be irrelevant in a, the larger scheme of things? I'll take the first and the last and John can get the middle one. <laughs> he is, after all, the political scientist up here. Um, not, not every experiment that you want to do in the atmosphere n needs to be a long-term measurement of changes in forcing. I mean, for example, there are serious questions about how would you introduce the material. You, you may want to introduce it as a, uh, uh, in uh, uh, a gaseous or liquid form. You may, and so you need to, 
to look at how spray technology works, uh, 